Sadashiva Samaramba, Raksharya Madhyamam, Hans Madasharya Padyantam, Pande Guru Param Param, Ishwaro Ishwara Guru Meti, Mukhiteda Vibhava, Vyomabda Vyapta Dehaya, Dachina Mukta Yenamaha, Sava Vedanta Sedanta, Gocharam Tama Gocharam, Govindam Paramanantam, Guru Pranatosh Maham Om. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Om. <coughs> So, so if you have a, a quiet background, please keep your, your, your mics on and, uh, and your, vi your video on if you can as well, because it's much more fun if I see you guys rather than just, you know, myself alone with my screen here. So anybody, anybody who would like to to begin our satsang today. So if we don't have questions, we need to, we need to find a text and start looking into the text. So one person is waiting, Fernando. Okay. So, so nobody has any question. I'm gonna get a book so that we can play by the book, as we say. <laughs> Come on. You know? I can share some ideas with. Uh, <laughs> My English is not so good, <laughs> so in this way I can train my English. Don't be shy. <laughs> so because, yes, in the last times, in the last weeks, uh, Vedanta has a huge effect on me. Now it's almost a uh, 10 month, nine month that I on the on Vedanta. And uh, so the last time it was very strong when we talk about uh, all this topic of uh, reflected consciousness, I realized that I had a um, avasana for the sattvic mind. <laughs> I was aiming, you know, I was, I had this strong vasana for the sattvic mind. Mm. And uh, I connect all this topic of the desires, no? Very, was very strong for me and realized that uh, consciousness is always there also if I don't have a sattvic mind mm. and uh, and how did you realize that um, I realized I I simply see it I, I realized that I was I, I don't realize it before that I had this vasana for uh, for a sattvic mind for having not for feeling good, good exactly but for uh, recognizing consciousness. And then I realized that consciousness is also when I don't have a sattvic mind. So right. I don't know if I answer your question. <laughs> no, I mean, in which way you realize that? My question, which way you have realized that your consciousness is always present regardless of your mental condition, you know? Regardless of your mind being Extress, stressed or, or rajasic, you know, agitated, or in spite of your mind to be dull and totally flat, you know. So how did you realize that? Oh. Hmm. Hard to answer this question. <laughs> I simply don't search it anymore. It's something like, uh, 
Okay. You, 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 this you is what no, I can say. You are, you are no longer moved by the preference of yes. that kind yeah. of experience. Yes, and this is more natural to to recognize awareness, consciousness, yeah. something so, like I, I cannot explain it maybe yet. But well, you like can it. because you still have to understand our language the mm -hmm. by, by, by the means of a mouth that is conveyed by words which is present in a language. And the Vedantic mm -hmm. language is a language of, of knowledge, identity knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's not a language of space, time, action, results of actions, you understand? So you, you say, you, I realized that I'm always ever present uh, and I'm reflecting in the mind of my of this jiva here, no? and as I reflect, I will my reflection is going to be a byproduct of the of the, the mental condition no? of the state of this mind. But I remain unaffected, so I realize mm -hmm. that I no longer need to control my mind or to 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 establish a highly subject mind. In, as a mean to, to fulfill myself, you know, or as a mean to complete myself, or as a mean to feel, mm. or to, as I mean to realize that I'm here, shine on this mind, because now I know that I'm shine at all times, at all conditions. So my question was, how did you realize that? <laughs> It's very simple, Claudia, and uh, you almost answered. And that, mm. that's the piece, the, the piece that is important. You have mm. that by the means of knowledge, by the means of understanding. Mm. Mm -hmm. People yeah. underestimate knowledge and people overestimate experience. They mm -hmm. put things in their proper place. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's not a very, very nice, reliable means of knowledge because experience keeps changing. Okay? Yeah. Knowledge is that which is always good. Once it is known and once the knowledge is truthful, is faithful to, to what is, one person is waiting. Who is this person? Okay. Once this knowledge is truth, mm -hmm for to what it is and then uh, and then it's all good it's always good yeah. present as knowledge so you understood you did not experience consciousness because consciousness is not it's not an object of experience yes you have been exactly. for, for for age you have been experiencing the reflection of consciousness on your meditative contemplative mind. Yes. and now after a period of time with Vedanta, you understood, and this understanding is a very important milestone, you know, because you understood that you do not need to really control your mind. You know, mm. you have certain preference. Everybody prefers to have a nice state of mind, okay? But the best way to establish a nice state of mind is again by the means of knowledge, understanding that mm. at before or beyond the states of the mind, because you are that which shines in the mind indiscriminately. You shine yeah. all minds, you know, without any discrimination. You don't care the state of the mind, you just shine. Yeah. So this knowledge, which is self-knowledge, is only possible by the means of knowledge, understanding, and this knowledge has to be hard and fast or clear, you know, very clear and, and firm. And, and, you know, it's a true, it's a doubtless knowledge. I am this light, the shining. You understand? So this, yeah. this, this knowledge relaxes the, the individual jiva because he no longer Absolutely. is concerned about trying to gain or achieve or, or accomplish something by the means of of a spiritual yoga or just uh, samsara yoga, you know, going about trying to gain and get things and avoid some other things. So by the means of knowledge, you understood something important and I'm very glad for you, Claudio. Yeah. 
Because if you would have told me that, oh no, I had an experience like this and that, I would say like, say, no, you have to start from the scratch. <laughs> no, 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 no experience. I, I'm detached, much more detached from aiming for the, the, the this clear vision, you know, the fatic mind that everything sees, everything is understands and, but also when I'm, so sometimes not so good, uh, okay. There is only one thing that we need to know. There is only one thing that we need to understand in order to be happy, you know, is to know our essential, fundamental, free, independent nature as consciousness. That's the only knowledge. If we have a vasana for knowing scientific phenomena, we can help the, our scientists and try to understand better the coronavirus, for example. No, if we want, if we have a mind that likes to know things, that is also okay. But we don't need to, because Ishwara knows everything for us. We just need to know a little bit in our field of, of life so that we can function. You know, we can navigate in life, in life. we need to know some objective knowledge, but uh, we don't need to, to, to start, you know, huge life. And uh, in order, or uh, there comes Dave, in order to, to feel satisfied and worse and, 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 uh, and um, adequate, you know, and so on, we don't. Yeah. We may know anything, everything in terms of, of phenomenal or objective or scientific knowledge. And none of those knowledge are going to really resolve uh, the fundamental problem of all human beings. So the only knowledge that we need to know is the knowledge <laughs> in respect to our or through nature, or through identity, what we really are, which does not depend, which does not depend on, on a certain mental condition. But yet we say again and again that we need to, to develop structure and develop a kind of, of satavic lifestyle, you know, begin practicing satavic thoughts and satavic actions so that we can develop a scientific mental condition. So we say that. That is very, very important. It's important because we need a good mind, a prepared mind, in order to really understand this, this simple fact about in regards to what we really are. We need a good mind. Once that knowledge is, is clearly assimilate, integrate, digest, you know, internalize, you know, once it's done, and then you don't need the mind anymore. You don't need a satvic mind. You say, ah, to hell with satvic mind. I want to experience a stressful mind now, okay? And then you try to get stress and so on. You say, oh, it's all the same. You know, depression, stress, and agitation. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding. So, of course, the byproduct, the bonus of self-knowledge is your mind tends to become more and more satvic after this self-knowledge, you know, is once this self-knowledge is properly assimilated, why it becomes, you know, more and more such because now the self-knowledge is so firm, you know, I am poor and I'm whole, full and complete, you know, I understand media, I have a complete spiritual knowledge, my knowledge, not only about satya, it's such a media, and I understand the relationship between Ishwara, Jiva, and Jagat. And I know the limitation of all objects. I know the utilitarian value of all objects. Yet I know that I need nothing because I'm already full, full and complete. And then all those vasanas, you know, that agitates and depress our mental condition, they, they begin drying, they begin dying, they begin melting, dissolving with the self-knowledge. Self-knowledge, the scripture says that there is no purifier such as self-knowledge. You see, this mental purification occurs, of course, before self-knowledge, during self-knowledge, and after self-knowledge. 
it, it, it continues. After the self-knowledge is really properly assimilated, this self-knowledge, it produces more and more subtle mind, you know? And, uh, and this process is effortless, you know? Even when we look at someone like Shemaya, that has all this extreme rajasic nature as a jiva, we can see that behind those rajas that allowed him to accomplish so much, there is this huge sattva backing it up, you know, with clarity, with genius mind and so on, you know. So it is, uh, self-knowledge is the greatest purifier of the mind, after all. Anybody else? Anybody with any contribution? Oh, there is Steven showing up. Nice. Hi, Steven. Good, good to have you back. Uh, hi. hi, Linda. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I do. We do. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Hi, hi everyone. Okay. So, so anybody, please throw some ideas so that we can we can play with. I just um, am responding to a word that caught me when you were talking about assimilation and. Uh, you mentioned relax. You said you relax. Yeah. And that's a, a subtle relaxation. Like once you've assimilated some knowledge there, to just get a little tincture of the limitlessness that comes along with that. And I, I love the way you said relax. It just felt really right. And then, but then, you get into the quandary of uh, focusing on the on that little subtle piece that comes from assimilation and you think oh now you're looking at the experience <laughs> and what's primary and what's dependent yeah. you know so it's it kind of can be tricky yeah yeah this is a good point Lynn, because uh, we have this huge vasana for experience and uh, and self knowledge is, is made of pure knowledge and uh, but the the trick saying is that there is an, a certain experiential element to self knowledge as i often say why because the mind of the individual is resolved in in more sattva <clears throat> and uh, and he relax and he's he relax he's no longer running to gain things or to avoid things and he's just at ease with himself in the world doing his playing his roles or her roles but without all those anxieties there is a sense of relaxation so this this relaxation and peace and so, and so on is an effect of a certain cause the cause is self-knowledge Self-knowledge, when it's when it's true and clear and doubtless, it's always there. So what happens is that this effect or this byproduct, which is a sense of peace, contentment, relaxation, and so on, this byproduct being an effect, it's no longer the focus of the yoni, because the yoni knows that that is just a shadow, that is just an effect. And the cause is my, my firm, hard and fast knowledge about who and what I am. So gradually, we, this vasana for, for the effect, you know, begins seeing like, uh, being seen as, as, this is just an effect, it's a bonus. The real thing is my knowledge. 
and uh, I'm concerned about my knowledge, knowledge of my own through nature. And I stay with it. And knowing that the byproduct, the natural outcome, the natural bonus that comes with it is, is a sense, a nice sense of, uh, of unconcern in respect to my experience. You understand? So the goal, uh, the, the, our goal of our spiritual life is to develop this, this passion in, in respect to, to what life, life presents us with. So this dispassion is there for the yoni because moreover, not only he or she knows that uh, there is nothing that can be added here, there is nothing that can be subtracted here, you know, but moreover, and I know that in, in terms of, of this field of experience, there is nothing I can really do to, to control my experience because it belongs to Ishwara. You understand? So you have these two fronts of knowledge, you know, you know, it's useless to try to control one's experience and the, in the spiritual world, everybody's trying to control their experience, you understand? Their mental state is an experience, our mental condition is an experience, it occurs to you, you know, you know how the fluctuations of your mental states. So everybody's trying to control the experience, like Cloud said, he's no longer trying to control and he's not longer focused on trying to feel good. Our focus needs to be like our, on our certainty of knowledge, understanding, you know, of what I am and why I am really free and untouched by anything that Mitya's, Mitya throws at us or the, the Dharma field may throw at us. You understand? So this is this is a shift. Slowly, slowly, you you develop more and more dispassion in regards to to the effects of of what it what is the cause, which is you know your self knowledge. You can have that effect by the means of action by doing certain sadhanas. You can produce a sattvic mind and experience peace and dispassion and you know and so on. But uh, as we know, if we, if we rely on actions to enjoy the fruits of actions as a sense of peace and contentment and, and detachment, what happens? What happens is the moment that I stop my actions, the effect goes. You understand? Because the effect depends on my effort. I need to, I need to keep my actions. That's why in the, in, the, in the spiritual world, people, they keep doing their sadhana, 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 and then they stop doing the sadhanas, and then their mind changes, and they are totally identified with their mind. The mind changes, and then they say, oh man, it's trouble, this world, this samsara, and job, and family, let me go back to my sadhana, until one day they get an idea, you know, I'm going to go to India, they live in an ashram, or in a cave, you understand? <clears throat> because... You will just rely on your actions as the cause of that state with which you identify. So we Vedantins, we want the, fruit, the fruits of self-knowledge. The fruits of self-knowledge is peace, you know, is contentment, okay? Such a kind of mind that is clear, you know, it is detached and so on. So we want that because that represents the end of suffering. You know, a good mind, a mind that can, can understand what's going on, can make a good reading of the field and, and respond timely, you know, <laughs> and appropriately to, to, to all the stimulants and so on. So we want to have a good mind. But the Vedanti knows that that mind is only really possible by the means of understanding one's true nature by knowledge, by following the logic until it's totally clear, you understand? That is the, that is the path, the pathless path of the Vedantin, because he does not, does not need to do anything except think, or, or as Shemaya used to say, analyze, you know, just follow the logic and analyze, you know, go with it until it's clear for you. Huh? So we only do 
that intellectual kind of sadhana until this knowledge is fully, clearly assimilated, you know? So, and that's our focus. And then we know that the byproduct, the effect, is going to be a peaceful life. Yeah? Regardless of the circumstances of the field, because we have no control. Yes, Stephen. I'm poking. I'm, I'm poking Stephen to see if he. Asked Sorry. Me. Sorry, I've just got a have a few uh, computer issues. Um, okay. So I've got a question. How? You know, I've got some of these binding uh, fasteners that just keep. Uh, you know, they don't seem to leave me alone. Any um, any tips? I suppose well, it's just the hard work of it, but you know, I want an yeah. easy solution. Yeah. So there is no shortcuts. There is no easy solutions. The spiritual work, you know, is is the best work we can do. Because we are, we are working on our minds, you know, in our minds, the, it's, the, it is our primary instrument by which we can be an enjoyer or sufferer. So we are working on our mind and developing knowledge, understanding, you know, so that we can play the game, the human game from a, from a wide standpoint, you know. So there is no shortcuts. You need to really do the, the work from the, from the bottom up. But uh, as far as vasanas, Stephen, is uh, we are all operate by vasana. There is no individual who is not a medium operate by vasanas. The question is more like which vasanas I want to be operated by, right? And then, and there we go into this, this teaching about which vasanas I want to be operated by. I want to be operated by good vasanas, sattvic vasanas, dharmic vasanas, and so on, spiritual vasanas. And then on top of that, we need to add, and even if you were going to choose to cultivate spiritual dharmic vasanas, you have to do so carefully because you don't want those vasanas to become binding as well. You understand? So there are two things into the equation. One is you want good vasanas, vasanas that are going to promote your spiritual elevation. At the same time, you don't want them to be bind. So the definition of binding, and you, you probably know it well, binding is, is, a, is a vasana, is a desire, it's a tendency that we have that compels me tyrannically, you know, you know like fascism, you know, tyranny, it compels me to, to think, feel, say, and act in a certain way. So when it's a compelling thing, and that is synonymous of uh, slavery, I am being governed, driven, you know, operated without any saying without any power to choose. So our free will is totally compromised when our, this vasana is pushed us around like that, you know? So the vasana needs to be good and we have to keep a balance so that you no know, vasana becomes a binding vasana. Again, a, a good example of a good vasana that can become a bad vasana because it becomes a binding vasana is the vasana for such a reflection of consciousness in your mind. So have a nice, blissful you know, state of mind. That can be a, 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 a it is a good bus, bus to begin with. But the moment that it becomes an end, not a medium, you know, not a means, an end. And, and the moment that I become addicted to that, 
And then a good vasana became a bad vasana because now it has slaved me. It's, it's the teaching about the chain, you know? You have developed a, a beautiful satipic vasana, but it's just like a golden chain. But a golden chain is going to bind you the same way old rust iron chain would bind you, you understand? So it's more a question of how we want to, to, to be driven, governed, and, and we want to be the master of all of us, and it's not the you know, slave. slave. Yeah. We want to be the master of the vasana. Okay, I want to cultivate this, master, this vasana, but yet I want to have the last word here to when they say, no, it's enough. So I got what I could have you know, gotten from you, and now I want another vasana to operate me. A vasana said, oh, you don't push me around. We have been friends for a decade now. You know, I have been doing this yoga for 35 years, doing all mm. these portions and this exercise, and now you're pushing mm. me. This is not fair. I take you to court and so on. <laughs> the Vasana is going to kick and scream, you know. But we need to keep my, our, our, our mastership or masterhood, also however we say it, and be able to say enough. Enough of you, please. You have served your purpose. Now I want some other vasanas to operate this machinery here. And we are, we are biologic computers programmed by vasanas. And we have a small power, which is our free will as a programmer, to somehow to program our vasanas at our will. But we have to be careful the same way all this talk about the danger of artificial intelligence for the future, you know? So this artificial intelligence may become so huge that it takes over the free will of human beings. So we need the same way we have to be careful with these vasanas, these good vasanas, because we don't want them to become a monster that takes over my free will. Right? So, what is the problem with your vasana? Is it not helping you to, to grow? Um, no, it's more or less that, um, you know, life sometimes gets, uh, can be quite hectic living in the city and you sort of, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you're rushing and you don't have time to always you know be doing all your actions in in awareness or at least you just you yeah. know you got to make decisions and do things very quickly and then it's you know your life's sort of going like this and then you need to sort of slow it down and then yes Kevin, i think if i recall we had we had similar conversation a few times in the past i, I know a little bit yeah about your family, your, your life situation. I know you have an extended family, wife and children and so on. And uh, you have to look into, into your lifestyle and all these, these actions you have to perform every day. Also, as, as your dharma, you understand? Because uh, we, we cannot work. We can we can't walk away from our dharma. We can, you know? If one's mind is so clear, so pure, so mature, that mind can walk away from one dharma and clearly understand, like, that's okay. My sword dharma now is to walk away, and I'm sure that the shuara is going to find someone else to replace me. They will take care. Shuara is going to take care of, you know. Mm. If shuara yeah. does not take care of, of, uh, of my family, it's because it was their karma as well. You understand? But my mm -hmm. dharma now, this is possible, but it's rare. In most, most cases, it would bring about more mental conflict and disturbance because one would feel, you know, a lot of remorse and guilt and so on. You know? So we need, to, we need to work through our accounts, our, our roles, you know, we need to do what it takes. And that's why we have Kami Yoga. And uh, we spoke a few times about that. I think the only way 
when we have a very, very intense lifestyle due to our, our karmic condition, you know, it is to just keep doing what we're doing, but with the spirit attitude of a karma yogi. Of course, it takes some time and energy to develop the, the, the knowledge of karma yoga, karma dharma, that will, will develop to become the attitude, the devotion attitude, which is unique to the karma yoga. Okay? Karma yoga is made of two aspects. One is the, the rational, the knowledge, the science, the understanding of Nietzsche and how things work here. And once we have this mapped and we understand it all, and we know, you know that there is this, this principle, this living conscious principle called Ishwara the Lord. And it, it is Ishwara who, who is providing us with all of this and doing all of this for us. And uh, in our case, human jivas, Ishwara gave us this, this small you know, power to decide how to direct my life, to, what to do, you know, more or less. So we have this power, and this power needs to be exercised properly. You understand? So this is the, this is the situation we have. If we have a karma that is very active, it's a lot of actions, a lot of responsibilities. The only way is to find whatsoever free time you have, Stephen, and, and really, you know, dive into the teachings of Kamiya or Gita again and again. If you want, we can have some side talks about all of this. I can help you because if you're really serious about, about changing your life, you need to begin with karma because your life is conditioned by a lot of karma, right? So you need to begin with karma. And karma needs to be not only karma, like the karmis, the samsaris, they are karmis, the people who are acting all the time. You know? So we from Vedanta, we are not karmis, we are karma, karma yogis, okay? Yogi is the spiritual aspect of someone who is engaged in the world, playing one's role beautifully, dharmically, okay? fairly, and so on. So we, we need to find the time. You will need to find the time to, to really, one hour a day at least, I would say, find one hour a day, lock yourself in your, the library home or, or any, any, whatsoever space you have, or in the living room when everybody goes to sleep and dedicate some time for you to, to, to establish this, this knowledge in your mind, the Mitya knowledge, the Shwara knowledge, or Kama Yoga knowledge. No, and then again, go through your days keeping this knowledge alive in your mind until it begins developing the attitude because the the logic, the science of Kama Yoga alone does not transform. What transforms is to have the rational, the knowledge of Kama Yoga, and then uh, <coughs> develop to become also the spirit, the attitude. You know, this spiritual religious attitude is what really transforms. But why we don't tell people, ah, just forget about the rational, Forget about the body of knowledge called Kama Yoga and just go directly to the attitude, okay? Be a devotee of the Lord, you understand? Do everything. I mean, Osho Rajanish told us all of that, but he never presented the larger, the teachings. There was no teaching. There was only do this, do that. So just do, live your life in worship. Turn every action in your life in your worship. Do everything knowing that you are doing to, is to God, period. You understand? And that way you're going to grow and going to be happy. There was no logic. There was no science backing it up. So we from Vedanta, we all, we base all our teachings in logic. And then we have the logic of Kama Yoga. It's, log it's an impeccable logic that cannot be 
<laughs> protest. It cannot be challenged by anybody once you really have a flexible, open mind. So we present the logic and then with the logic, we are empowered to turn that understanding into a certain attitude. <clears throat> we are going to convert our emotions. We are emotional beings. The most beautiful thing about us, human jivas, is because we are emotional beings. Okay? With no offense to anybody who loves cats and dogs. I know that cats and dogs may have some feelings. But there is no other jiva that is such an emotional being like we are. And our emotions, usually, we are taken over by these emotions, rugged versions, you know, desires and aversions. We are moved by this, I want what I want, I don't want. So these likes and dislikes, these emotions, needs to be converted in what? In devotion, in, in, into gratitude. Okay? into reverence and contribution, seeing, seeing the, the field as Ishwara, seeing what comes to us as Ishwara presenting us the results of our karmas and so on, seeing God and respond to the field as, as with the spirit of contribution, like Ramji likes to say, adding value, giving, giving more, you know. So this spirit, this spirit is only possible Steve, when we, when we really have worked the rational aspect of this science called the Gita, the Karma Yoga, you understand? I mean, Gita is not only about Karma Yoga. Gita is a scripture on Karma, Dharma, and Moksha. That's why it's so beautiful. We should, as soon as we are done with this Viveka Shudamani, we should move into the Gita because it's my favorite scripture because it's complete. So Steve, you need to you need to find time. It's not the problem is not a, your vasana. Of course you have a lot of a lot of extroversion. You know your 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 mind due to your lifestyle is very active. It's very extroverted. It needs to do things. But you need to find time to stop either early in the morning before people get up or late in the night, whatsoever works better, take time for yourself and, and, and just dive into these teachings, you know, and then contemplate for some time and then begin integrating these teachings of Kami Yoga in your life. Kami Yoga is the best purifier for householders. You know, we begin. I did not begin that way. I began like most people, I began with meditation, which is a terrible place to begin. Because how are you going to meditate if your mind is totally unprepared for meditation? Osho used to say, go and meditate. But Osho was nice because he told us, us you know, you Westerners and even the Indian people, he said, you, you cannot meditate, your mind is too stressed. So you are not, we're going to call it meditation, but basically he prescribed us a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of bioenergetic exercise that he used to call meditation. What, what they call the active meditation techniques of Osho Rajanish. So we begin like that, but in general, if people, if people did not enter the spiritual world by Osho Rajanish, they enter directly. By, by the window of vipassana or any other meditation or, or mindfulness, you know, it's a, it's a huge frustration because you need to have a pure mind in order to enter into meditation. You cannot enter meditation from a very gross, unpurified mind, you understand? You need a meditative mind to begin meditating. Mm -hmm. so therefore, for, for us householders, you know, active people, extroverted doers, you know, people who have a lot of things to, to do. There is nothing like Kam Yoga. There's nothing more beautifully designed. It's such a gift, you know. Otherwise, we would say, okay, this is my karma. I have to live the rest of my life like that. It's all about materialism, providing, you know, things to my family and the future and security. 
And then next lifetime, I, I want to be very careful before I get another birth, I will say I want to be a sannyas and go to live in a nation because, you know, I couldn't do it right now. No, I mean, you know, Yeshua has revealed to us the teachings that allows us householders you know, to, to not only prepare the mind, you know, but also contemplate on our fundamental free nature because Kami Yoga has both, has Yin Yoga and Kami Yoga side by side, you understand? So you, you, I highly recommend once again that uh, you, you do that and uh, nobody else is going to do it for you still. I mean, it's, if you take away one hour of your life for this, you may say, oh, I'm not going to sleep enough because I'm already sleeping only five or six hours. You know, if you take one hour, your sleep is going to be better, more refreshing, even if you sleep one hour less, you understand? Yeah. yeah. And if we, if we really look honestly, we always, then we always use up some of our time doing things that are not really needed. You know, it's just the force of habit. We start doing one thing, doing another thing, you know, and then we get hooked with action and those vasanas. You know, action needs to be limited to that which is really needed, necessary. One time somebody asked Ramana Maharaj, please give me something because you are men of very few words. You almost never say something, you know. Give me some indication, give me some orientation. <clears throat> Tell me what shall I do, you know? And then Ramana said, oh, just be moderated. Just a sec, there is somebody who wants to come in here. Be moderated. And then the guy was not satisfied with the answer. He said, well, what do you mean, Bhagwan? Okay, so please elaborate a little bit more. And says, moderation with doing, speaking, eating and sleeping. So we need to moderate our actions. Most of our actions are not needed. Moderate our talks. I mean, a lot of talk, words should be used for communication. But once you, you words become such a habit that mm -hmm. we cannot stop. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm talking from yeah. direct experience because I have been I lived many years of my life in Italy, and people here, they cannot live without talking. <laughs> so, yeah. moderation It's the same is, here. Yeah, moderation is, oh, you have Italian blood today in your family, your wife? No, but, uh, you know, mm. um, my wife likes to talk. Yeah, no, no, I read, there's actually, the, I, I came across a saying that was, I think it was Plato, he said, um, why a wise man speaks because he has something to say mm. and a fool speaks because he because he has to say something yeah yes that's beautiful good. very very beautifully put it reminds me of somebody, somebody very serious came to me not long ago and said so tell me something on a private contact you see tell me something why why women talk so much more than men you know and I was not expecting him to say that. It was actually in India when I was in India. He called me on the mm. Why woman talks so much, man? She, she, my wife talks much, too much, much more than men. Why women talk so much? And then I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him, maybe because she's not, she's, she's, she was never really heard much. You know, she has been suppressed and not really heard by the men and so on. Mm. Yeah. And now she's a little bit overdoing it, maybe. But uh, but moderation in uh, actions, in words, food. You know? When we are off balance, we tend to eat more than what we need more often and more. You know. And then Ramana also put the moderation with sleep. You won't believe it, but some people. They sleep so much. Did I tell you guys the story in the northeast of Brazil that I came to know more in details about the wife of my son? 
she, she if if people would make a, a it's not a, I forgot the word in English, a competition, a world competition about to see who is the best sleeper in the world, you know? So my, my, my daughter-in-law should be there participating because she sleeps in any position, in any situation, whatsoever circumstance. She, she sleeps so much that she was forbidden when she was a bit younger to, to drive on the motorcycle because a few times she slept behind like that, she forgot, like that. She slept in the shower, you know, in standing. She sleeps in any condition and she sleeps 15 hours if she's allowed. I mean, I spent, I spent 10 days there with my son now and I was, almost every day I was with them and I, I could see it. In the restaurant, any possibility she had, she, in the restaurant, she's already napping. So we have to be moderate with sleeping because sleeping, it, it generates more and more thomas, 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 thomas. You know? So moderation with... Uh, and then we could throw another one, moderation with meditation. Don't meditate too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just enough. <laughs> Not too much. Yeah. Moderation is the key. What is it? Is it in Buddhism they have, uh, is that saying, mud, is it Madhyamika, the middle way or something? Yeah, the middle uh, way, yeah, moderation, yeah. 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 Thank you. So I hope that uh, it may help you to really find, find your time to begin doing this Kami Yoga work. Okay, Is there any, uh, I see there are some messages. Did anybody write uh, uh, a question here? No, no? no. Um, what Stephen was saying was making me think of um, the difference between living your life and letting life live you. You know, having some action and control. Um, or that, that pause, taking that pause to say, wait a minute, this, this world is running me rather than yeah. having a little, taking that pause to step out of letting samsara run you, something like that. Yeah, so what distinguishes us human jivas from the other jivas is because we have this so-called free will. We have a certain power to decide. Yeah? We can determine, we can decide what to do, what not to do, you know, what to eat, what not to eat, what, what uh, the direction of my life, you know, what kind of work I want to do. So we have to make those decisions and life hits us all the time on a moment to moment basis. And we need to keep using our our free will, you know, exercises intelligently so that uh, we can, we can, it's not easy to live, Karen. I mean, we are called to respond again and again. Again and again, we need to use our free will, our power to choose. And, and choosing things is, is a stressor in itself. Every time we need to choose, if we take choice seriously, we, we stay stressed for all the time. <clears throat> we need to gradually understand that Ishwara is somehow is orchestrate things and then our free will is more or less used to identify that which is the most obvious course of action in this moment, you know? Because uh, we never know, nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball, but uh, we, we have the ability to choose the most obvious kind of uh, response, you see? knowing that there is a lot of room to mistakes. So what distinguishes us, we are being lived. It's a fact, huh? going back to the big. Life lives us all. If we, we most probably you heard Ramji saying like that, oh, you think you are doing things, forget it, you are being done, you know? So life is living us, but we are kind of a unique, 
Jiva, we are Jiva with a power to interact with life and say, oh, not this one, please. No, 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 please. Take it easy on me because, you know, I'm done with this kind of experience and so on. So we have this free will, Karen, that allows us somehow, you know, by presenting our response again and again, allows us to redesign our causal body, our vasana load. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are being lived by Ishwara. Ishwara is the macrocosmic, macrocosmic causal body. It's, it's operating all of us from there. But the only difference between us and all the other animals is that we have a certain power. We provide by our actions, we provide Ishwara with the, with the raw material that is going to constitute the vasanas by which Ishwara is going to come back and operate us with those tendencies, you know? <clears throat> so that's the name of the game for the human jiva. We, we have this free will. We are being lived by Ishwara. Ishwara is doing us. But Ishwara is not alone in this game of life. As, as the human jiva, all the other creatures, they are programs. They are operated directly by, by Ishwara's causal body. Causal body designs everyone and say, okay, you will fly, you're going to live just a few, few hours or days and you're going to act like this, like a flight, like a flight cockroach or, or mouse or anything. But with us, we have this fundamental program as a human being. But due to our, due to our free will, our intelligence, we have the ability to respond or to, to interact with our, with our program and to say, hey, this program I know I, I came, I came to life with this program, these tendencies and so on, but it's not really working for me. You know, I want to redesign, you know, reshape my, my program, my causal body. All the work that we do in personal development or, or psychological therapies and so on, it's nothing but, you know, reprogramming our our causal body, so that we we operate by better tendencies. We want better tendencies so that we can live a happier life. So this is the, the difference. We provide Ishwara with the Vasanas, and then Vasanas, Ishwara's Vasanas, Ishwara is going to keep operating us, is gonna keep doing us, but, you know, I have something to say here, Ishwara, I want you to, to do me, you know, with this kind of vasanas. How I give vasanas to Ishwara? By the way I behave, the way I interact, by the way I act, by the way I respond to the stimuli. This is going to be the foundations of my new vasanas. That's why this mechanic, this dynamic, this, this self-reinforcing loop needs to be understood. Ishwara is not alone. Uh, Stephen, we provide Ishwara with the vasanas. How we do so? Our actions, our words, you know, our words and deeds, our thoughts, our words. Mm -hmm. We want somehow to control our thoughts, our words, our deeds, so that we begin growing and you know, provide Ishwara better blessings. Ruth, you're going to say something? Well, I've, I've been rewriting the past um, based on the teachings and looking at things. So my ability to move forward um, is actually um, being being transformed in that way. So um, the idea of looking at how I thought things were <laughs> um, was only just my projection um, in so many words. So what do you think of that? <laughs> it's more psychology, I guess, again, uh, but that's, that's one of my bosses, I guess you could say. No, I don't know but if he, I understood very, very well your point. Can you try to elaborate it a little differently, please? Well, it, um, it gives a deeper understanding um, to me 
uh, to go back and review some of the things that I really believed were true. Yeah. So that okay. I'm just not acting on those past beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. It it introduces a greater sense of freedom. Yeah. In the in the present to move forward. Yeah. Of course, all this all this uh, uh, psychological we could say work it has mm -hmm. a certain spiritual value as well. You know. Mm -hmm. so we we from Vedanta we don't go into that. And again, the danger the danger here is to be too much attached to to psychological work. Mm -hmm. because that's but but it is it, but it is karma yoga for me to r do reframes, you yeah. know, in in light of the teaching. Totally, yeah. You can again investigate. Is this a, a fact or it's my my vasana projecting? Okay, anticipating and so on. You know, my, mm -hmm. my impressions, my mm -hmm. I'm relieving my mm -hmm. project. So this is good spiritual work as well. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it's a good base. Yeah. Totally. But more profoundly, more effective than that is the understanding of uh, of uh, karma and its loss. You know. And, and understand the position of the jiva and the position of the shuara in, in reference to the field and, and then understand this <laughs> understand that we all get our vasana load and nobody's guilt every one of us has a certain power to redesign reconfigure you know, our 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 causal body it takes some time takes effort and it's not necessarily an easy job to be done Therefore, we, we, we are more, our invitation is just follow the scripts of Kami Yoga, you know, and naturally your, your causal body is going to be reprogrammed in a nicer way, you understand? Without having to be there trying to really, you know, you know there is an expression in the business world about micromanaging or micromanaging. So a micromanaging or macromanaging. <laughs> micromanaging is really trying to, to they're controlling all your conditions, your projection. It can become an obsession. Okay, but you can you can manage it from a certain wider perspective by understanding what belongs to the jiva, what belongs to Ishwara, and knowing that you know Ishwara is is the is the real ruler here and uh, but I still I have to watch for my projections. And most importantly, I need to understand what's Dharma, what is my Swadharma, and so on. So then the entire teaching. You know? Yeah. Else? How are you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm doing all right, Alan. No, I was listening to it. All oh, very good. Um, I was thinking, talking about this, um, that as fears and desires arise in the mind, more and more, I just tend to see them as a jiva, and I'm the witness of them, and so deal with them on that basis. Um, see them as there, and yes, they affect me, and um, sometimes I have the ability to not react, and sometimes I still don't have the ability to not react, and I do react, but more and more just distancing myself from the fears and desires and whatever emotions mm. arise really um so yeah i don't really have any questions regarding it but yeah very good 
Okay, well, I guess that's it for today. Nice to, to be back in Italy. And it's the same thing, wherever I go, I always meet my good friends. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice to have this technology at all. Yeah, our hands. Was it um, was it easy for you to was it easy for you to fly back? Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, good flight. One flight a week from there to Italy. I came. I came. I came. Uh, the kick. The last kick I got was from from my brother reporting me uh, <coughs> that uh, the the consulate. The Italian consulate in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, was urging, urging the Italian citizens to leave Brazil as soon as possible. And then I learned later on that most other consulates, or they were saying the same, they were, they were urging the people to leave Brazil. And that's, that was when I, I said, okay, I'm going to go, because I was enjoying myself there big time. I was. I was in a nice place, but it was good to move because uh, <clears throat> here, if something happens to me, uh, I'm, I'm more likely to be taken care in terms of healthy. There in Brazil, uh, it would be most probably impossible because the, the medical infrastructure is very poor and, uh, and myself being there without any without any medical um, plan, you know, I don't have any insurance, medical insurance or anything like that. I would be more <laughs> vulnerable. And uh, I have been having problems with my throat and a little, so everything together just told me, okay, time to go home. And it, there is another side, I, I, I'm saving almost 400 euro months of an extra rental I was paying there. So that's, Beyond the 50 year, so one less cost. Yeah. It was a good flight. And again, I want to thank you all who have been helping me with uh, some uh, donations here and there. They are highly appreciated and they have been very important. <laughs> very important to, to support me and, uh, and I, that way I can also help my son that is still living in great difficulties right there in Brazil. Yeah. So if it, nobody has any further contribution, we can we can close our meeting and we meet again next Monday. Ishwara willing, of course. Hmm. Oh. Chate, O Nasia, O Namadaya, O Name Babashi Chate, O Shanti Shanti Shanti. Okay, thank you, everyone. Love you. See you soon again. And Steve, feel free to contact me if you if you feel inclined. Okay. Much love to all. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao, Miranda. Bye bye. Bye, Karen.
Good night. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Ma.